Hi, I'm Bethany with Shabby Fabrics, and today I want to walk you through a quick tutorial on how to make this adorable stocking you see behind me in this cowboy boot motif. This is from Howdy Christmas from Northcott. It's a beautiful fabric line, and they have this pre-printed panel here with two stockings on it. So there's one behind me, and then we're going to make another one together on set today. And uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do with this panel is um, we're going to want to quilt these. Now, you can take this whole panel like this if you want to put it on your machine and just quilt all four boots. That's awesome. Um, if you need to, you can, like, like I did, cut out just a rough cut with my rotary cutter freehand, about a half inch around each boot, and quilt these on your domestic machine. We're not going to put any lining on this. This is just going to be the batting. And I'll show you what I did here. Okay. So this is one I've quilted. It's kind of hard to see because I stitched right like on the edge of the, the design. But if I flip it over, you can see I've got that quilted. The one behind me here, I did, did a bit more intricate quilting on that. Um, but you can do whatever you'd like. There's no rules to that. And then one thing I like to do before I go to the next step, which would be to trim around the edge on this, um, is I'm going to stitch right next to the edge of the print. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch away. Um, this whole design here includes your quarter inch seam allowance. So when I'm doing this, I'm kind of just keeping everything neat and nice for my next steps so that the if my quilting doesn't go all the way to the edge, I know that my fabric won't pull away from that batting. So once you have both pieces quilted, we're going to trim right on the edge of the fabric. Because this design doesn't have a lot of straight lines, I'm going to do this with some scissors. All right, now that we've got our boot cut out, you see I have the reverse here. Um, we are gonna use these as our pattern piece to mark out our linings, okay? And what we could do is on, you know, on our lining here, unfold the fabric entirely and trace you know, um, one piece here, the other piece here, um, but because these are the exact reverse of each other, I can leave my fabric folded and cut just one, or, or trace one piece and get both pieces reversed that way. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I want to make sure this is nice and straight and not going to move. And then you can do this from the wrong side or the right side as long as you can fit your whole boot on there. And I got plenty of room here. Again, my quarter inch seam allowance is included in the design of the boot here. So I think I'm just going to go around with a pen and get this marked. And then again, I will mark this and cut by hand with scissors since there's a lot of curved edges here. And then I don't want these two layers of fabric to like move or wander at all while I'm cutting. So I'll avoid the uh, rotary cutter. I'll cut these by hand and pin them together before I do go to cut them out. All right, got this all traced out. Before I start cutting, I'm going to want to pin both layers together just to make sure nothing shifts while I'm cutting. And then your kit will include the full panel, which will have uh, both stockings printed on it, and it'll also include lining enough for both stockings. So you can um, make both and display them in your home for Christmas. I think they'd make a really adorable gift, um, maybe to give at Christmas time or for like a, a new like couple friend or something like that. I think that would just be adorable. All right, so be sure to save. You'll have a you know kind of a, a bigger scrap here from the lining. We're going to use that in a later portion here. Um, and then what we're going to do, now it's time to sew our linings together and sew our um, boot together. Of course, we want this to be wrong sides together, or sorry, right sides together. 
So I'm going to stack these on top of each other. And then the pattern that, the, that comes printed on the panel tells us to leave a opening in the bottom of the foot of the lining for turning. So I'm gonna pin this together here, but I always forget that opening. So I'm gonna mark it where I'd like to leave it. And it says about four inches. I'm just going to kind of measure that here by eye. And we'll get this all pinned together. A stitching um, here from the top edge is going to stay open. Everything else will get closed except for this opening here all the way around. And then the lining, same thing except for every edge will be closed except for this top one. And this will just be sewn with a quarter inch at our uh, sewing machine. Okay. And then real quick before we sew that, I want to talk about when we go to pin our boots together, um, we're of course going to want to, to the best of our ability, line up the print on the panel. And we'll get some shots here of this close up, but this is one of the like best printed panels I've ever seen with how well I got the two pieces to match up. So it just kind of takes some extra time to match those seams really well and the printing on that before you take that to your machine and get that sewn with a quarter inch. It's always okay to kind of put it together and then open that seam, see what you would see in real life. And then when you get that where you like, get it matched up. And I think there's just a few places on the outside where the pattern will, the print of the uh, panel will match up. So again here, I'm gonna check that these two come together just perfectly. And then I usually kind of check that about a quarter inch down, you know, because sometimes right at the very edge they might li line up perfectly, um, but a quarter inch down they are. Uh, so that's kind of how I do the pinning there to make sure that the panel is going to match up. But again, it's one of like you know, a lot of times you get a panel and it's just to you know to the best of the manufacturer's ability, it's straight. But sometimes not everything goes perfectly. Uh, in that and it gets a little bit wonky but this panel when I was making the sample I was just astonished at how straight it was and how well it all matched up. All right so again on the quilted portion we are going to sew with a quarter inch seam all the way around the entire perimeter leaving the curved edge open and on the lining we'll sew all the way around the edge leaving the curved top open and a four inch section at the bottom for turning. All right, now we've got those sewn together. So we're gonna place the stocking, we're gonna turn it inside out. Actually, before I do that, I wanna go in and clip some of these cor curves and corners where I know things will be coming together. Like here, it'll be convex, so I'll just go in and snip this a little bit so that it can turn really easily. But here, I know it's gonna be concave. I'm gonna come and make sure I don't clip into the seam I just sewed. Look at that pretty close so that it can have a little room to turn and lay as flat and as smooth as possible. I think I'll just do a couple slits along this curved edge just to give it some room to kind of breathe as it turns. This one's a really gentle curve. But here I'll go in and do a bit more. And then I would do this for both pieces, the lining and the, the outside boot here. I'd say the boot's a bit more important uh, because it is the outside, the lining, you're not going to really see that. Okay. Let's 
turn this inside out. This is so cute. Grab my point to point turner and we're gonna get all these curves pushed out here. Along the edge, the heel of the boot and the toe. All right, so one thing I love about the point-to-point -point turner is it's got that gentle curved edge and then the kind of blunt point edge that really help get these points out, but then I can also use it to kind of push out these curves. And I do frequently use just both sides of this kind of interchangeably for whatever situation I need. There we go. That's looking like it. Okay. And then before... I start adding my lining. I do want to get this kind of pressed. Ooh, and if you can see that here, look how beautifully those seams matched up. Absolutely gorgeous how well this panel is printed. Love that. Lining here, I will leave wrong side out, but I am going to go in and clip some corners just to make it a little easier for turning. And then we, um, before we add the lining to the outside here, um, the pattern does say that you can add a ribbon as a hanger for this. Um, there is no ribbon included in your kit, but we do have plenty of fabric here in your leftover lining to make a hanger for this. So I wanted to show you a quick way to do that and then give you a couple other options as well. I am going to, just with my two and a half by six and a half, use this and cut out a quick two and a half by six and a half here. And if it's a little shorter or a little longer, that's fine as well. You can always adjust that when you go to add the hanger. We're gonna take this, fold it in half and press, and then fold in both edges and press as well. Nice, super quick and easy little hanger here. Now once you've got this pressed here, you can take this to your machine and sew real quick with like an eighth of an inch down both edges and then you would um, add that into your stocking here. I'm going to show you a different one I did. I'm going to get this all pinned and lined up together first and then I'll show you that one. And so your stocking right side out will go into the lining wrong side out. You might have to use the opening in the bottom here to kind of help shimmy this down. What we're really trying to do here, most importantly, is line up the opening. So if this is a little jumbled down in here, that's just fine as long as we get the top opening lined up really well. So. Okay. And I'm gonna pin, I want my hanger to go on this side so it hangs thusly. So I'm going to get this side pinned together real quick and then show you what I would do with the hanger. All right, so when I was first making this, uh, you know, reading the pattern as it was printed on the panel, it did say, you know, add a ribbon uh, to hang and it didn't really give a, a ton of instructions. Um, I wanted my hanger to look a little more rustic, so I searched around the shabby sewing studio here and found a ball, uh, like a like a spool of jute twine, and braided that together. And you can see that here. I just zigzagged the ends, and this will be my hanger. Um, this would go raw sides up towards the raw edges of this. 
and I want this to hang right on either side of my seam. So you could pin that in if you have maybe a clothesline or even you can do the little fabric like we have here, that would be exactly the same. It'd go in here, raw edges aligned, and it'd go between your lining and your stocking here. I'm gonna use some clips to clip this one in place. It's a little thicker, it's a little too thick for my pins here. But whatever you do, um, I think it'll be super cute with string or super cute with the fabric, either way. Okay, and then add our machine, quarter inch all around, and then we're gonna turn it through the opening in the bottom. All right, back from the machine, we're gonna use the opening in the bottom of the boot lining here and pull this through. And then before we shove this inside. I just want to double check everything's looking real good here. I got my seam coming out. Okay, perfect, perfect. I want to, you can either hand stitch this seam close since this is going to be buried way deep in the bottom of my stocking and hopefully no one will ever see it. I'm just going to top stitch this closed real quick at my machine. And you can pin this. I think I'll pin it, or I'll clip it, and get this little seam closed up here that we turned our bag through, our boot, boot through. That last little bit is done. I'll clip those threads and we'll start working this inside the stocking here. All right, get the point to point turner out. All right, I can feel it right inside there. Might wanna give this another quick press and then we'll take this to my, our machine for our last little bit of sewing. It's gonna be a quick top stitch around the edge, just a quarter inch from this folded edge to keep everything in place and from moving around as we use our beautiful little stocking here. All right, so with that last seam, our stocking is done. You're ready to give us a good pressing and then hang it in your home or give it as a gift for Christmas. I think that is so cute. I did really quick want to walk you through a bonus project on the panel. If you saw when I opened this up, there was these little gift tags here printed to kind of fill up the rest of the space on this panel. And I want to show you a couple ways that you can um, finish these and use them as gift tags here. Uh, I have two that I cut out. I used the remaining fabric from the lining. Remember we had a bigger piece left here. Put these right sides together, stitched around the edge, left a little hole for turning. Turn these out and then stitched around the edge again on the outside and made these little gift tags here. If you want to do maybe a no-sew version or something a little faster, these I actually just heat and bond together. So one layer of heat and bond between the two fabrics and then went in with a decorative stitch around the edge of these. But these add a cute little addition. If you are giving these as a gift, you can uh, use the extra panel pieces here to give that as well. All right, thank you so much for joining me on the tutorial today. Again, we do have limited kits available that'll make both stockings with the lining included. Those will be on our website. And be sure to subscribe and like this video and we'll see you on the next shabby tutorial. Mm -hmm.